Hey, let's bring in our next guest. And we appreciate him sticking around. Nikki Lopez from the Kansas City Royals. This is the best. Nikki. In the yeah, I got laundry the laundry room, room behind and me. It's perfect. It's impeccable Wi-Fi, though. So we appreciate it, dude. I know you were fighting some Wi-Fi. You're in the hotel? No, so we're, at, we're I'm at the field right now. Um, we're in Miami, so the the Wi-Fi was hit or miss in the clubhouse, hit or miss down in the in the um, dugout. So I found the best spot, and it's in the uh, laundry room. So, <laughs> wait, well, what's the, uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, the clubby in Miami. What's his name? Uh, gosh, he uh, always tried to sell you like a TV. What it starts with an R? Um, yeah, on a blank too. Yeah, tell him to freaking up the Wi-Fi, dude. I, that's what I'm saying. Pay the bills. Yeah, something. My whole thing nowadays is like each park should have like a room where you can wire in connected. I'm working on that behind the scenes. Okay. So we'll keep you posted. All right, let's get into it though. Yeah. Why not? Uh, Nikki, how's life right now with KC? I I know the team's gone through some ups and downs, but there's promise, there's personalities. And the thing I'm most bummed about is it's the one day Eric Kratz is on the show, like 99% of the time he's like coaching a state final game and it's early, but he does the best Salvador <laughs> Perez impression. So do you have one? I, I, I personally don't have one. Um, I mean, his, his voice is, I mean, I, I'm not trying to, you know, nag on, on Salvi, but you know, sometimes you got to just, you know, pick and choose and listen hard. Um, but his, you know, his English is good. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> Salvi, Salvi's my guy. I'm sure Eric has a much better, uh, uh, impression because he's a, a fellow catcher with him. Um, but yeah, like you said, it's, you know, a lot of young personalities, a lot of young guys, um, they like to express themselves, which is good, but we're, you know, we're going through it. Obviously we want to win some more ball games, but we know where we are along the, uh, the journey. Um, and right now, so we're just kind of trying to piece it together. Um, trying to, you know, take positives when we can, um, not really dwell on the negatives because we're, we're going to take our bumps and bruises. And um, it's kind of crazy. I, I've made my debut in 19 and the only two position players that are still on the team is me and Salvi. So I feel I feel kind of old, even though I'm 28. Damn, you're old. You're, man, <laughs> I'm old. You're, super, you're super duper old, Nicky. <laughs> yeah, are, right, are, exactly. Has uh, Q, has he posted a lineup yet? Yeah, Q, Q did post a lineup, yes. Are you in there? I am. I'm batting seventh, playing third. Okay, good. Because I'm doing the game tonight for Fox, so I'm going to ask him why you're not hitting higher. <laughs> well, I get like 15 minutes with him. I'm going to say, hey, Q, why is Nikki Lopez not hitting like second? Like, see a little bunt, a little hit and run action with you? Right, exactly. I've been, try- I've been trying, but, you know, maybe the computers don't say so. So <laughs> <laughs> We had a Q on the show recently, too. Yeah, we did have him on the show. He was great because he, he – like every other manager in the big leagues, Kratz either played with him or played for him at some point. So right. <laughs> Kratz knows like every manager. He doesn't know any of the players. He knows all the managers. <laughs> oh, man. Nikki, you grew up in Illinois. So I the really the only question I have for you is were you a Cubs or a White Sox fan? Well, I, I'm going to say Listen, that. I'm going to say this. This will determine how the rest of this interview goes because it could be. Well, it, I'm, it, I'm, I'm, a, I'm about to say that I was at the game two of the uh, 05 World Series when um, you guys yes. hit the, when Scotty Pods hit the walk off home run. So um, okay. when I was, when I was young, I, I loved Derek Jeter um, being an infielder. Um, so I always watched Yankee games for Derek Jeter. Um, but we went to a ton of White Sox games. Um, I remember, uh, Obviously, that World Series run. We were actually right behind the bullpen where Canerco hit the uh, grand slam, so it went right in front of us. So it was, it was. Uh, you guys, you guys, you know, made us all or my family very happy. So That's I appreciate okay, you good. guys. You might be hitting third tonight, by the way. Now. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, keep pushing. Yeah, got a lot of yeah after that, after that <laughs> answer, yeah, you might be hitting give me, third tonight. Give, give me some more abs. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> hey, I'll... do you know what his OBP is right now? Three fifty-seven. I know. That's Let's what I'm saying. Go, baby. That's what I'm saying. You're a great surgeon right now. You got a little uh, Pasquatch in you, huh? Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. We had a little hiccup with uh, uh, appendectomy that popped up uh, randomly, but um, this is probably my I think my fourth game back. So I'm uh, yeah, just trying to get on base. That's I'm not a guy who leaves the yard every single day and you know tries to you know lift and but I'm a guy who who knows who I am. A guy who picks it uh, at different positions and tries to get on base for the guys to drive me in. So Nikki, it's all about knowing who you are. How long were you out with your appendectomy? 
So <laughs> funny story is, well, right before I went into surgery, I looked at our trainer and I said, is there any way I can avoid an IL stint? And he, he looked at me and goes, no, I do not think so. And then the doctor came in and was like, you're going to be out four to six weeks. And my fiance and my trainer were in there. And I looked at the doctor and I go, that's not going to work. Um, and he was very thrown off. We were in Minnesota. And uh, I was like, yeah, that's not going to work. And then he's like, maybe two to three weeks. So I, I actually was out like two and a half to three weeks. Okay. Um, so, yeah. I know why you're asking. <laughs> because Adam Dunn once had one. He was back in under a week. Yeah, but that's Kansas I know. City. Eloy Jimenez just missed a month. I, I know. And I tried. Adam Dunn. We were in Kansas City. Adam Dunn's like, man, my side hurts. I don't know what's wrong with me. And they're like, Brent rushed him to the hospital. Appendectomy. Under a week, he's back. Playing. That's crazy. Under. Uh, I mean, I got one too a few years ago. And I, I remember I was walking around with Smoltz. We were calling a game soon after that. And I don't know how I called the game. I was like, and I were just. Were you in the worst pain of your life? I, I was in, I would say, yeah, worst pain of my life. I'm, no, I'm on the floor. And I don't know what's wrong. And I'm just like, oh, man, I have the worst stomach ache. <laughs> and and my dad comes over and he just goes like this with his, like, right to the spot where your appendix right is. He goes, he goes, let me know how this feels. He goes, Poof. and I go, holy yeah. shit. <laughs> and he goes, let's go, hospital. And you go in and they're like, we're taking it out right now. Yep, exactly how it, and we were in, we were in Minnesota and, and right after the day game that I played in, um, me, my fiance, and my father-in-law, Went and got sushi, so I thought it was food poisoning from uh, Minnesota sushi, and uh, but it wasn't. It was my appendix. So, wow. here we are. That's the big difference. Is I mean, and our, our show, we, we clearly get into poop homers for Pete Alonzo <laughs> and all that. That's the thing. It's it's not the stomach ache where you're like, man, I got to go to the bathroom. You're just in that like shooting pain, obviously. <laughs> really, and you're like, what the fuck is this? So, well, Brutal. dude, glad to see you're I back. Still got and all feeling my parts good. so far. I appreciate you it. haven't lost yours. No. It yeah. sucks. It's not Nick, fun. Nikki, what's your favorite position to play? Shortstop? Second? Uh, favorite position is second base. Um, and it, it's kind of crazy. You know, third base, the ball comes at you pretty fast, but it takes the you, – you don't really think very much over there. You just kind of react, which is very nice. Shortstop, I, I would believe, is probably the hardest because you, you know, you got a lot a lot of stuff to, um, you know, to worry about there. You got to read the hops. There's a lot of thought process, you know, in playing short um so i think second and third are a little bit i i would say easier which not not any position is easy but um i think those two and then i love i love playing shortstop as well um i had a pretty good run in 21 at short um you know i've played my whole life at shortstop as well um but i guess anywhere on the field right yeah well i'm, <laughs> I'm asking you're playing third you said tonight well you got a break because solaire yeah. not playing for the marlins so well, thank, well, thank you got God one less out. dude to worry about whacking a ball. Or yeah. I know. And it's crazy because we can't be out in the grass anymore, um, you know, because of the shift. So I was I was like, well, I was going to go play left field. Um, but I guess we can't do that with the shift now. <laughs> yeah, it's a much more dangerous position now, for real. Guys have talked about it a lot this year. They're like, dude, I want to back up more against, you know, Solaire, Judge. Yeah. Can't right. Do yeah. It. Some Thank you. It's pretty scary now. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I can't imagine because I was I, listen, I'm the first one to admit I'm, I was scared of the ball. As a what? catcher? As, yeah. No, uh, yo, can we mind the plate? No, one bit. You put me in the like in BP in the infield? Oh, ball off bat infield. Yeah. <laughs> no chance. Scared you of the quick twitch? No, I just was scared to death of like a ground ball coming to me and ah, <laughs> scared to death. So put him behind the But you plate. put me behind the plate, I was fine. Or in the batter's box. But for some reason. Something about standing on that dirt and the ball coming at me and not having control over it. Mm -mm. The worst, the worst is the uh, the day games um, in Kansas City when it's like ninety degrees and it's just you're you're basically on the parking lot. Um, you don't know where where this ball is gonna bounce up. I took a I took one of the jaw off of uh, Brett Gardner hit it. It was like hundred eight off his bat, bounced up and hit me right in the jaw, and that that didn't feel that very good. Oh. So. Yeah, he's from <laughs> Chicago, tough guy. Hockey player. Right, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Hockey exactly. player. All right, so I'm going to give you an option here because you have some great personalities, some some guys that have been around for a while. I'm I, pretty sure I know which way you'll go, but give me your last conversation or best story this year with either Robbis Chapman or Zach Greinke. Uh, I would have to. I'd have to do Zach Greinke. Um, actually, so it's Dad's trip right now. We're in Miami, and uh, I told Greinke's dad the story of. How so? I went to Creighton. Um, Granky was um, committed to go to Clemson, 
and um, I, we were sitting in the locker room, and I pulled all the young guys together, and I was like, hey, if anybody can um, guess where where Zach was going to go to college, I'll give you $100. And everyone was, like, naming different, um, you know, different colleges, and then someone said Creighton, and Zach looks at him and goes, I was a four-time Gatorade player of the year. You think I'm going to Creighton? <laughs> so I was just looking at him like, oh, thanks, Zach. So that's like my favorite, one of my favorite Zach Granke stories. That's good. He, almost everyone has that when they play with Zach. It's not just like a story. It's a him like backdoor giving someone shit, right? Like yeah. right, exactly. I, I heard the, the other day he was talking about how he was a good bunter, but um, he told Q this, your manager, that he would have had, he would have had a lot more sack bunts, but a lot of the guys that were in front of him were below average runners. So they weren't getting a second for him. <laughs> so they would they would get the guy on the force at second instead. We had Whit Merrifield on where he was telling him like he knew how to pitch him and he could do nothing against it. Like there's there's he tells Jeez. certain guys their stat cast numbers. It's it's great. And he he says it like straight face. Oh, straight face. So like I, I interviewed I introduced my dad to him um, when we were at home uh, before we went on this trip. And he like just like stares at my dad and just kind of like looking, and I'm like he didn't say hi back and he was just looking he goes you sure that he's your dad because my dad's like a little bit he's like stockier a little bit bigger and um bigger frame and he's like you sure he's like he's a little bit more put together than you are and i was like all right thanks Zach. nice nice to see you just walk away (laughs) oh my gosh you gotta love it great hey we wanted to have you on but um it was complicated during wbc how was team italy there just because i know it's been a minute now but I mean, you had a pretty cool manager and just a fun team to be around. I feel like Team Italy almost every year is fun. There's all like the, um, like like the Italian celebrations going on. We definitely we definitely uh, probably go over the top with the Italian celebrations with the you know this and like the Nespresso in the clubhouse. Well, actually, the Nespresso in the in the dugout was um, actually someone that was from Italy. You know, doesn't he speaks just Italian and. So he actually brought it, and then Nespresso reached out to us and was like, "Oh, we gotta, we gotta send you guys stuff," and it, it was pretty cool. But it was, it was probably one of my favorite experiences playing baseball. Um, just a lot of group of guys who were representing Italy, um, you know, from the states. Um, and now, you know, in three years, we're gonna keep the same team because we were really young as well, and maybe add a couple guys. But it was, it was a blast, and be able to go to Taiwan. Um, kind of backdoor our way into uh, advancing to Japan and then obviously facing Otani in the Tokyo Dome was something I'll never forget. So, Nikki, have you ever Googled yourself? Googled myself? Yes. I sure have, yes. The first thing that comes up is Nikki Lopez Italian. So yeah. Nikki Lopez Which, is not an Italian name. So explain to me sure, how the heck you sure played on Team yeah. Italy. Well, I, so that's the thing is that, you know, when I first, you know, made my debut um, – here in the states like I, I got a lot of latins sp- speaking spanish to me and i still do and i'm just like no habla espanol man like I, that's like i had to learn how to. and so now i go you know Bullshit. now i go to italy and uh and so a lot of the my the italian guys are like well you know lopez is not an italian name and but my mom's 100 percent italian her family is from uh, Italy, uh, and then my dad's like 5% Italian, so I'm actually more Italian than I am uh, Hispanic. There you go. There you All go. Right. I have um, I have a question being he, that... He doesn't what? have the Italian accent, but he's got the Chicago accent. Oh, yeah. for sure. He's got you, could, you could get it? Accent. Oh, 100%. Yeah, I could have guessed in five seconds where you were from. <laughs> you guys need to say car. I need a car. <laughs> <laughs> hey, because it's my last question here is because you've got the dads on the trip. AJ said that was it your mom or your dad would send you the stick figures? My mom. Mom would send him stick figures um, on like his stance, like to try and help him if he was struggling. So does dad do anything like that? <laughs> so no. So we, we stick figures. That's funny. So no, I I shut that down pretty quick when I was in college. I was like, Dad, I got I got coaches here. This is freshman year. I was like, I got coaches here you just watch baseball and enjoy it. Like this, it's all going to work out. Just stop telling me to lift my elbow and squish the bug. We're done with that. Um, so, so that, that stopped in, that stopped in college and um, which was, which was very funny. I always joke about it. Cause I was, I always say, Hey, when I have kids, like you're going to have to teach them, but you're not going to teach them how to hit. And so he, he's like, all right, fine. Um, 
so yeah but no he's he's good actually a really cool story was that in 2019 when i made my debut my first ever trip big league flight was uh dad's trip so my first ever big league flight was with my dad which is pretty special so i don't know if a lot of people could say that that's pretty awesome i never was on a team that did dad's trip they, so they should have i they, know I, the guys I, love I think it it's awesome, awesome. So, yeah, we did it in 19, and then this is the first time since 19 we did it. So, kind of cool. So, so I have a 16-year-old son that's going to be a junior in high school. Awesome. And I tell him how to – I'm like, hey, son, this is how you should hit. You know, squish the bug, elbow up, you know, the whole thing. you say that? <laughs> no. no. But he looks at me, and every time he looks at me and is like, Dad, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm like, listen, kid. Like, you sure? <laughs> I might not know a lot of it in this world, but if there's one thing I knew how to do in my life, it was how to hit a damn baseball. There's a lot of stuff I'm wrong on. If there's one thing you can listen to me about, it's hitting it. Now, he's gotten better as he's gotten older. But when he was like 10 to 12-ish, he would look at me and I'd say something about hitting. And he's like, he'd look at me like I was the, the dumbest thing in the world I could have ever said. So, I, I mean, I know, what, I know what your dad is going through. As a dad now, you look at it and you say, I, I know what your father is going through because I've lived it. Right. Now, I, I and, you know, if – I would listen to you if you told me how to hit. So just to let you know, you know, not to. Yeah, but you're not my son. So yeah, you're not I, my know, son, I know. Though. See, that's the huge difference. It's the family thing. <laughs> it's the family thing. So I can tell, I, I can tell my son, like if your dad told your hitting coach, hey, go tell, go tell Nikki to do this. You'd be like, oh yeah, that's a great idea. Now it just came from your dad. <laughs> one person over, he just whispered in his ear. Like I could tell you're my not. son, I could go tell another coach at the high school. Hey, go tell my son this. And he'll see me tell him. He'll run over and tell him and he'll listen. But if it comes from me, no, nope, no chance. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. There's yeah, maybe it is. Yeah, it's a. Go ahead, sorry. No, no, go ahead. No, I was just saying. Yeah, maybe it is the the, the family aspect of it. It's just. Yeah, I mean the squish the bug though, and the the elbow up is probably. <laughs> you got you got to admit that's probably that's that's outdated. Oh, a million percent. I've been in the adult working <laughs> world where there's certain people that you have to like, sometimes people have this with executives or even like certain broadcasters I've worked with in, in other TV life, like where you have to let it be their idea, right? Where you're like, oh, what if we did this? Yeah, let's do this. And then it's like, oh, that's their idea. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's all psychology. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Hey, Nikki, it was awesome catching up with you, man. Next time we'll do it without the laundry. But actually, this this connection is pristine. <laughs> yes. So you can tell your teammates, hey, if you're trying to like call someone or do anything, that's the spot. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. And if, for your future callers, if they're ever in Miami, go to the laundry. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. Good luck tonight, Nikki. Can't wait to hear AJ call your game later. Yeah, I'll give you some mad Thank love tonight on the game. Okay? Appreciate I appreciate you, man. that, AJ. Thank you. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. I'm going to tell the Nikki. story you're at game two, too, so make me look Love good. that. Hell yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. There you go. Appreciate Thanks, it. Nikki. Cheers, man. See you guys.